Hey, everybody, and welcome to another week at Beyond the Trailer Park. Uh, fresh with tech issues, apparently. <laughs> the sound was not on for part of the way there, but oh well. Um, I'm sure you've all heard the intro music a bunch of times, so I'm not too terribly worried. But anyway, welcome back. And uh, as usual, joining us from uh, steamy Pencil Tucky. Good evening, Beth. Good evening. And from the wilds of Mississippi. <laughs> Hello, Morgan. <laughs> hey, how are y'all doing? Good. You know, we have we almost have a Mississippi in Canada. We have Mississauga. Oh, close. Very close. Very close. It's a suburb Just of Toronto. It's backwards? Oh, then it's probably not as hellish. Okay. It's probably not as hot either. No, it's definitely not as hot. But yeah, it's probably not as full of goofy people either. I don't know. I've never actually lived in Mississauga, but I drive through it like almost every week. <laughs> and joining us from Maine, got it right this time. Not New Hampshire. That's right. <laughs> that that would be Atheist Ranger who lives in New Hampshire. Hi, Ranger. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, good evening. And I'm not sure from which part of these they're United States, but uh, joining us from the land of Holy Kool-Aid, good evening, <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> Glad to be here. I'm actually in Oklahoma at the moment. Uh, oh, I was born there. Yeah, I've been on the road traveling around, but um, staying with some friends for a couple weeks, and then I'm heading up to uh, Gateway to Reason in St. Louis. Nice. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to that, but Thomas kind of gets around a little bit. Well, and not in the, not in the sleazy sounding way. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you say that like it's a bad thing. I know. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, th this is from the show that has penis water bottles, so you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we we won't torture you with those, though. That's okay. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm, all I've got here is a cup. Yeah, well, it's so okay, I, Deb. You gotta pull them out and show them. I have a mug that says "I drink and I know things." This oh, is that's good. Nice. I got one. See, I found this at Pride. <laughs> oh, it gets better. Yeah. It gets better. Well, this this is what the original, and it came with its own cock ring lanyard. Is um, that exported from Japan? Because they have a National Penis Day. No, these are actually made in Canada. <laughs> they, they do, but these are made in Canada. And so I got that one a couple of years ago. Um, best four bucks I ever spent. And then um, this past year, um, last month actually, I, I found the, the rest of the group. <laughs> they're, they're multicolored. So we now have the originals pink. I now have yellow and blue. <laughs> and I, I have to, I don't know if you, it'll take a second for that to, is that a Canada flag? It is, but there. It's can BPA free. It's so fuzzy on this end. I know. My, oh, it's intended for works. beverages only. <laughs> yeah, this, this is intended for beverage use only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know they had to put that on there for a reason, right? <laughs> well, and, you're, you're squirting fluids out of it, so. Yeah, <laughs> I have like the most rude friends because I have one friend that's like, hey, I want you to drink uh, apple juice out of it. And everyone else wants me to drink milk out of it. And I'm like, yeah. oh. <laughs> no, no. And I, I'm like, do you think a bottle brush can get in that nut sack? I don't <laughs> like, no. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> now that we've completely wigged out, Thomas. <laughs> some some subset of our listeners are like going, hmm, not sack, bottle brush. What am I doing right now? <laughs> I mean, we broke the ice at least. You know, this shatter the, the awkward. You know. This is you where, know. Once you talk where, about, you know, nut sacks, you can pretty much talk about anything. I think so. <laughs> Awesome. I, I mean, you have such a wholesome channel. I kind of feel bad. But, you know. <laughs> well, no, I, I actually had that for you. Yeah. I, I actually had, um, you know, I, growing up, I had zero filter, none. 
and which is weird because I was a missionary kid, but I just yeah. you, know, you live overseas, you you have profanity all around you, and you you know you see things and whatnot. But uh, on my channel, I wanted it to be family friendly enough that people could of watch it, you know, with their kids yeah. around and stuff. But every once in a while, I have those rants where I'm just like. I like to come up with creative ways to say something because I think profanity in general can, if it's just every other word, it's a, a sign of a small vocabulary, if nothing else, a lack of creativity. And so I tried to find more creative ways to, you know, insult or to, you know, poke fun at something that's not just, you know, an F-bomb. But every yeah. once in a while, there's, there's you kind of need that just for that that level of... Um, the, the impact that those words carry. Absolutely. And so when I go on a rant every, every now and then I'll drop one and it always throws people off guard because I, I normally try to be kind of nice. <laughs> well, I, and I mean, so for those of you who may not be familiar with Thomas, Thomas has an awesome YouTube channel called Holy Kool-Aid and it's, it's a very informative channel and he does, uh, works very hard to educate people, which is why I can understand you trying to be more PG-13 because you're trying to disseminate information that's valuable to as many people as possible. So you don't want, you know, people freaking out, like you said, about having kids around and whatnot. So that's quite understandable. Um, but yeah, I personally would have a hard time keeping it under wraps for everything. So that, that's why we are an explicit channel because I just. Because yeah. <laughs> you got to bust out the water bottle every now and then. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, see now I, um, I'm a panelist on another uh, weekly show called Holy Crap the vlogcast, which by the way, um, the host of that show, Shujin Tribble, he's like, you know, you should really give Thomas what for, for that name. Holy Kool-Aid. Cause Holy crap's been around longer. <laughs> but, well, yeah, but you're, you know, people are drinking Kool-Aid and, you know, they're not eating crap. I'm, you know, assuming. <laughs> I'm hoping. I don't know anymore. Well, if you follow yeah. Goop, if you follow Goop, you uh, might be. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there, there, are, there are actually, um, certain people, uh, subsets of Hinduism, where the cow is so sacred that any kind of uh, fecal matter or um, urine is seen as like holy, and they'll either smear it on their bodies or, or drink it or whatever. Right. It's it's kind of yeah. nasty. As the daughter of a dairy farmer, I find that really hard to process. <laughs> but what I was saying about holy crap is um, Shujin does try to keep it mainly PG-13, but every 10th episode um uh we call it a, a power of 10 and and all all filters are off and we just had one on saturday so the the fucks were i didn't be happy on that one you could have <laughs> but i didn't see you up so i didn't bug you but now you wait wait, wait, wait. you said that you were the daughter of a dairy farmer yes did you ever go cow tipping cow tipping is not a thing it does not happen, at least not where I grew up. Well, I'm sure you can tip them over, but the question is, can they get back up? Yes, they can. Um, <laughs> it might take them, you know, 15 or 20 minutes, but uh, yes, they can. <laughs> and if it's not a thing, then where did that originate from? Well, exactly. I'm sure some asshole knocked over a cow somewhere, but they also, the idea that they only sleep standing up is bullshit. They lay down. Right. So, you know, so I'm the learning. The problem with cow tipping, cow tipping, as we discovered in college, is that you can break a cow's leg. Yes. And, and yeah. sadly, we did that, and the cow had to be destroyed. So, yeah, cow tipping didn't last very long. Okay, so cow tipping happens and, uh, in where was that Buffalo area? Um, well, I, I was south of Buffalo, but yes, it was basically uh, in New York. New, upstate yes. New York, yes. Yeah, yes, it, it was a thing when I was in college, and people still do it, but the right after that incident, and we're going back 30, uh, they, they started putting out public announcements that while cow tipping might be fun, you can hurt the cow. 
yeah. because their their leg bones uh, are not that strong as far as you know right. for sideward's torque and you can actually break their their legs and it can actually damage their udder as well Jeez. and here's here's an article from uh, slate magazine from September of 2013 is cow tipping real physics says you'd have more luck tipping a Camry <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah because all all they have to do all they have to do is is spread their legs wider and you're fucked that's yeah. you know <laughs> but the um interestingly um my my father and my brother were avid groundhog aka gopher hunters and that's actually very useful because they dig holes in pasture and if a cow steps in a groundhog hole they can break a leg and that's you know potentially thousands of dollars of revenue a farmer out, depending on wow. whether it's yeah. a, a dairy a dairy cow or, or a beef cow or, or whatever yeah. i know my, my my one cousin who raised uh beefaloes uh it was a cross between a cow and a buffalo and the meat was much leaner and he used to every day they would go and sit you know uh when the groundhogs were notorious for coming out and they would actually hunt the groundhogs but <laughs> that definitely is a thing because how have i never heard of a, a beefalo before <laughs> <laughs> I, it, 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 I think it was mostly a western new york thing it never really caught on nationally hmm. and uh I well, didn't yeah, even know so, that the two could interbreed, to be honest. I didn't either. I don't know how, I don't remember how they do it because I stopped eating beef not shortly too long after that. So So is this I something never... that, that we can take to um, Kurt Cameron or Ray Comfort and be like, you know, here's your <laughs> crocodile? <laughs> it's a beef <beefalo. laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Oh, man. <laughs> Speaking of that kind of bullshit, I was about three years ago, there was a creationist came to this area to speak at a local church. And as I like to say, he was right out of the Canham School of Stupid. Uh, <laughs> but he had one of those pictures in his presentation of like, you know, the cow body with like a, a what was it, an alligator head and like a lizard tail and yeah. No, but or or the cow jumping waves with a dolphin. Because they expect that in just one generation, there's going to be this full body mutation and half yeah. the parts are, you know. Exactly. Speaking of Ken Ham. Oh, no. <laughs> he is. I don't know if you guys have been following the bullshit with the Ark. Yes. Well, the Ark is basically floundering. <laughs> Pardon me. Funny that. But uh, it. He he's like ripping. It. He's blaming everybody under the sun but himself. Mm -hmm. The ark sinking, and uh, so Hammett Mead, over friendly atheist, has uh, been following it pretty close. So if you want to catch up on Ken Ham bullshit, yeah. Oh yeah, I like him. It, it, I had him. I had him on my podcast not too long ago. Yeah, yeah he I he like came him. on with us. Uh, not my podcast, my my channel. Your channel, yeah, he came on here a few months ago. I had the the pleasure of meeting him at a. He came down to Ontario and and did a talk. Oh, in the fall, I think it was. So it very it lives up to his name. Definitely very very friendly. Yeah. <laughs> no, he he actually told me that uh, he's he kind of wishes that he hadn't chosen that name because there's times when he wants to be a little bit more yeah. scathing, but yeah. he you know. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, but have, you, have you ever heard him being scathing? It's just, it just doesn't, he doesn't, his personality, yeah. he's just, I have actually, but I, I have, <laughs> but that's when we were talking together, like, he actually, yeah. when, when I started to swear, he was like, kind of like, oh, cool, swearing's all right, then he mm -hmm. left just a little bit. Just, just, just. <laughs> well, I, I get whenever I make just a rant, and I'll, I'll just blast, you know, some some religious concept or idea, and I and I feel like I'm kind of being harsh, and I'll have people say, "You said that in the nicest way I've ever heard." And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> I wish people would tell you say that to me. Well, I don't wish, but yeah. 
Yeah, people do Nobody not says me. that to me ever. No, me neither. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, never. Blunt. I'm blunt and I get told, oh, you're so aggressive. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not aggressive. I'm just telling you like it is, but whatever. I think but, it's that uh, I just I, I say it at a kind of a room, normal room volume, and then just I mean, normalize I, it up to minus one dB, and so it's it sounds like I'm just kind of speaking calmly. But I, I am kind of loud. Maybe that's it. <laughs> yeah, when I get loud on my loud rants, I start sounding a bit like Seinfeld, like the, that volume. I'm like, what's the deal? But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah and i'm just so salty all the time and people are just like damn like good lord like every i'm in rr i got a reputation for it too <laughs> I went well, and look, Morgan, you're even describing yourself not being nice in a nice way you're like i'm so salty <laughs> just like i'm a bitch on wheels well <laughs> it's like i think it's my thing that covers it up it's like how bless your heart is an insult it's not a compliment yes i loved that line um when seth andrews did his talk where he's like and y'all know uh you know bless her heart is is basically a really sweet fuck you <laughs> yeah i mean fuck that bitch yeah that's exactly what it means she has so, put on so much weight since she had a baby. Bless her heart. Yeah. <laughs> so, Thomas, you said you were a missionary kid. So, uh, what what sort of denomination was that, and and sort of how indoctrinated did you get? I'm not sure necessarily that my parents identified with a specific denomination, but okay. if anything, it was very close to Pentecostal. Oh, okay. So they they believed in tongue speaking hand raising uh, you know right. worshiping all out you know sometimes there'd be dancing and they believed in miracles young earth creationism which they've kind of gone a little bit back on the whole you know age of the earth thing since i've talked okay. with my my folks that's good but they say oh well that that's not really you know a cornerstone of our beliefs you know it's all but i think it is but that's where we disagree <laughs> But the, the church that I grew up in, surprisingly, was, I, I haven't seen a church like this anywhere anywhere else yet, but it was a multi-denominational church. Oh. So okay. while a lot of churches will say we're non-denominational and they just won't associate with any affiliation, this one was like all denominations, you know, if you believe in, you know, God and Jesus and, and the resurrection, you're welcome. And so they would have a different speaker every Sunday from the foreign community come in and, and talk, you know, preach, and they'd have a different style church band every Sunday. They'd have a different, sometimes it'd be a traditional African choir with their traditional instruments. Other times it would be a, a rock band from Texas. And then sometimes it's a, a woman up there with a the piano. So I kind of got a really interesting perspective on all these different types of flavors of Christianity. Interesting. So, they took it was there a, like a missionary program or they just took it upon themselves to to spread the good news well they they were affiliated with ywam i mm -hmm. i don't you know and, and again i they, they could have had a specific denomination but i don't know if what ywam what? specifically is okay what it's, is that it's with a mission oh, okay okay so, so yeah what what is the acronym exactly, Thomas? Uh, youth with a mission. Okay. Which you know they're hardly youth anymore. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. I was like, your parents are youth with a mission. Oh, my, my parents. It's it's weird because I'm the youngest, and my parents got married mm -hmm. late and had kids late. So most of most of my friends my age, you know, their parents are, you know, maybe fifties or something. My parents are like ten years older than that. You know, they're pushing 70 so, so your parents so. are my parents age yeah was, probably well my parent well my stepfather is like 72 but my mother is like 67 well my my granddad passed away a while back but uh he was actually a world war ii veteran oh wow so yeah there's kind of a, a gap he got married late and then my dad was the youngest i was the youngest but yeah right and he had yeah. he had some really interesting um experiences too and and um you know whenever i hear 
Holocaust deniers, I, I just shake my head because he was one of the the soldiers that liberated some of the Nazi death camps, and he had pictures that he had taken firsthand, and right. you know, and, and showed me them, handed them to me, and he's like, you know, just so you you know, so that you never forget. And I was about My thirteen at the time. Driver. Yeah, or was yeah. I should say she's been gone for thirty years now. But yeah, yeah. I, I'm in the same boat. My well, my mom passed two years ago, but uh, my parents are in there. My dad will be ninety in February. Mm. My youngest cousin, besides myself and my brother, <clears throat> is reaching seventy. <laughs> so I can understand the yeah. the age yeah. gap. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so you you were were you born in the U.S. and just traveled as a young fellow, or were you? I was born in Los Angeles. Okay. But I left there when I was about three years old, and the only times that I've really been back have because we don't have a lot of family out there. But right. my brother moved out to L.A. and he works out there. Okay. And it, he actually is the one you know because he he does a, a lot of video editing. And he, well, he's an editor on some different shows and stuff. And he taught me how to use, you know, Adobe Premiere and nice. you know, some different tips and tricks and, and things that I needed to, to know. Before that, my, the extent of my video editing um, skill set consisted of stop motion Lego videos that I did in high school with a one megapixel <laughs> camera. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> But, you know, you start somewhere. You start with, you know, you can't expect to just put out a video one day and it's going to be this amazing piece of art. Yeah. You start yes. with what you've got and you learn and you keep learning and, and you keep growing and then you invest in better equipment that you can afford and, you know, eventually you get something that you're proud of. Absolutely. Well, I, I think that's, a, that's an important tip to, for people that are just getting into podcasting is start with what you got. And work from there. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you, you might have the content. You just, I mean, I'm still at the bare bones. And that's because, you know, financially I can't afford to. But I still try to make my content as best as, as possible. So. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And you can do it, you know, on a, a reasonably small budget if you need to, for sure. And Especially it, starting out, you know, when you're not getting a ton of downloads, you're not your hosting fees aren't quite as as high. Exactly. That that was funny. I remember um, when David Michael started my Book of Mormon, and he he had self financed for quite a while, and finally he you know he got sort of hey, you really should do a Patreon and whatever. And I hear, I remember him saying, "Who'd have thought having better success would cost you more money?" <laughs> <laughs> but that's just kind of how it goes. Yeah. But, uh, well, so if you throw, if you throw sponsors in your show, then you're also getting more more viewership yeah. and more you know ad revenue. But that's true. Yeah. So you uh, you traveled around with your folks, and I um, I watched. You actually just recently did a video that's sort of all about Thomas. So um, if anybody's watching, you wants uh, a little bit more detail, and um, he definitely gives that too. And you you have a, an impressive list of countries that you've uh, lived in and or visited. So they they was that mostly with your parents traveling. Uh, I did some with my parents. Um, so I, I've been to Turkey about five times with my wow. folks. I've been to um, Georgia, the, the country, um, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia. Um, although a lot of this, this isn't all with my folks. Um, I actually, I did um, a study abroad in Russia. Oh, nice. And, yeah. And I... You know, I traveled to Dubai on my own. I went to Afghanistan on my own and um, Vietnam, Thailand, Dominican Republic. Like that was all just self travel. So. Right. Excellent. Excellent. You studied so. abroad in Russia. So were you the other person at that Trump meeting? <laughs> <laughs> if, if I, if I was, then, you know, I, I'm sure that I'd have reporters knocking on my door left and right, trying to get some sort of information. <laughs> I know, right. It could be anybody though. Oh man! <laughs> so if the, if they were um, being missionaries in Turkey, which is I know they say they're well, they, they weren't. They were, 
they weren't okay. in Turkey. Like that was they just we traveled there and visited. Oh, okay. Them. okay. So where were they? Were they more missionary stuff in the the Stan country? I don't I don't mention the exact place okay. for. Okay. Fair me, enough. But uh, yeah, it was it was a former Soviet country. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you, I think I remember you did a spell as like a youth pastor yourself, right? Oh, I've done, I've done the full gamut. Yeah. <clears throat> I was a youth pastor. I was a, a church worship leader. I was a church camp counselor for two summers. Uh, I was in a Christian fraternity. I was a missionary. I was a missionary kid. Um, yeah, you know, I've, I've pretty much done it all. So you had gallons of Kool-Aid at one point. <laughs> yeah, but if, if anything, I think that that kind of prepared me to be more equipped to talk about it. So when someone says, you know, oh, you don't know the context, and I'm like, okay, really? I, I not only have memorized the, this chapter and the ones surrounding it, but I have the, the Greek and the, the Latin pulled up next to it, which I've studied both of, and I'm looking, you know, side by side in English and, you know, then... Yes, I, I, I of, get that quite a bit, too. Yeah, um, Beth uh, was a, a ministry student at one point on the path to being a minister, so she's mm. got a lot of study under her belt, too, and always loves that, you know, it's a wrong translation. Oh, really? Do I have mm. to pull out the Greek now? <laughs> I'm as close to a PK as one can be without actually being a PK, mm. so... Were your, were your folks the, the kind that would not, not a Sunday would go by, you know, you could be puking out green, whatever, and, and you're still going to be in church? Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's it, like, bring, bring your bucket and try not to burp too loudly during the yeah. sermon. Kind of but what, what's bizarre, though, is I was raised Missouri Synod Lutheran, and in col I went to a West Wesleyan Methodist college, but converted to Pentecostalism. Mm. Now, see, if, if you're puking, you're not sitting in the back with the bucket. They're bringing you up to the front of the stage to oh, have hands yeah. laid on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, not not my parents' church, but my last church, yes. Yeah. I remember I they, went to I, one of those. You went to one of those? Uh, yes, it happened a long time ago. I'd actually forgotten about it till now. But yes, when we were in eighth grade, I remember my dad was looking around for another church because he got mad at our other preacher because people were fighting about the music style. And he was like, this is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And then also they showed like the crucifixion of Christ from a passion of a Christ at that church. Oh. And they didn't say, hey, we're going to show this. They were just like, bam, here's Jesus being whipped. And then my dad was like, my daughter's in fifth grade. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And then he was like, she needs to see that. And he was like, no, she doesn't. And then, like, he was already kind of mad at them anyway because in Sunday school, he um, killed a wasp with his Bible because everybody was freaking out about it. And so I was like, I'm allergic. My throat will close. And so he just goes, bam. And they all like flipped out and were like, use the word of God to kill an animal. But <laughs> so they're it's all the like, sort of the spirit. Out. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. But and he was like, it's a wasp. Like, calm down. And they're like, you use the word of God to kill something, whatever. But um, so yeah, oh, we were looking for another church. And we saw there was one that was in our um, little suburb of Jackson, Mississippi, where we were living at the time. And so we go to the church, and the guy, so they put all the kids in one room, right? And the youth pastor was saying, oh, well, you know, I fell and hit my head, and I had to go to the doctor, and they had to do some kind of, like, surgery or stitches or something. And he's like, but then I realized I wasted all that money on nothing, because if I had just prayed, the Lord would have healed me. And I was like, at that point, like, I was a Christian, but I was like, what is he talking about? Like, you should still go to the doctor. What is wrong with this person? And then he was, like, having all the kids, like, come up to him so we could lay hands on him. And I grabbed my brother, and I was like, no. Mm -hmm. And I was leaving, and I saw my dad coming down the hallway, and he was like, we're going now. And he never told me what happened in his Sunday school, but I imagine some weird shit was going down. That, that <laughs> was sounds, just, like, that sounds like Christian scientists. <laughs> Oh, Christian scientists, maybe it's kind was. of an oxymoron. Yeah, I was like, if they're scientists, shouldn't they yeah. trust in science? Yeah. Or what? What? What's their deal? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, the the they're Christian scientists. 
they'll they'll say uh, you know we believe that that God cures disease. So they'll go to the doctor for like broken ah. bones and stuff, but they if if they have cancer or something, it's you know we're gonna lay on hands and it's, it's you know we don't need modern medicine yeah. because God. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it was. They didn't say what denomination they were on the like front of it, and but now you know my parents go to the church uh, Six Flags Over Jesus, as I call it. <laughs> it's one of those mega churches. They have a rock climbing wall and yeah. Yeah, our the football coach from my university will preach at the one of the satellite churches. That's how big it is. They have satellite mm-hmm. churches all over the state. Yeah, wow. And he's like, "Oh, your football coach preaches," and I'm like, "Okay, good for him." Like, yeah. congratulations. I'm still not gonna go to church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. A and M had a um, there was an event that some massive baptist church put on their southern baptist church and it was you know bringing in you know everyone all the youth for you know this big revival college whatever and this texas a m yeah and they had some guy i think he used to be a, a coach i believe for a and m but he wasn't anymore and but he's like this you know fundamentalist religious guy and they're like yeah you know the, the coach so and so and in texas i mean it's like football is basically god yeah and if you have you know religion and football and you're able to mesh the two together then you know everyone will show up for that but yeah that's how it is down here too and actually i think um people got mad and because i i go to school at old miss i'm a law student here mm-hmm. and um that's all we pretty much are known for is football <laughs> and mm-hmm. um so yeah, we were um, also were known as the Harvard of the South. Like that's a compliment, but um, yeah. So he will go around, and he uses that for recruitment. And he will actually like tell them about how like Christian he is to um, students, and try to get their parents to be like, "Oh, well, he's a godly man." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's why we're under an NCAA investigation." <laughs> no Christian for um, all this shady shit we did. Yeah, we yeah. can't we can't go to any bowl games. We have a ban, but um, but yeah, he'll advertise that, and I think FFRF actually sent a letter. Um, yeah, they did about yeah. like I don't know if it was him necessarily with a recruiting, but they were basically like, "Watch it, buddy!" And everybody lost their damn minds, and they're like, "They can't do that and take our Jesus away." He was so, praying. Yeah. He was praying on the field with the Oh yeah, he was. It was, not, it was it, that's what FFRF went after him for, but they're going after a lot of your, not just your school, but um, a couple of the other schools is that they're, you like you said, they're using the whole religious bullshit as a recruitment tool. Yeah, because basically if, if you are not religious, you don't play. Mm. Wow. Uh, in Texas, it's become a really, especially even in the high schools. It's, oh, in the high schools, uh, it's very it, bad. Yeah, it is, Thomas. I mean, basically in Texas, football is like, they we, we have a football field where I am, and they're nuts about football in this area. Down in Texas, they have football stadiums for high mm-hmm. schools. That's uh-huh. the, I mean, We're the same way, because that's all we have yeah, is like athletics yeah, down uh, in the south. Yeah, and a lot, a lot of your schools down in the South LA, but Texas is really bad. I know when I lived in El Paso, it's just like, it's freaking May. What are you talking about football now for? <laughs> and see, and I am so glad that I live in a non-religious state. We're the third least religious state yeah. in the union, and I am so grateful for it. I'm in the <laughs> most religious state in the union. Up here, I mean, I mean, I, I live in the southern part of the state, which is where all the people are, and this the more liberal area. And you, you go, you go a little bit north, and it's not all that different, probably from Mississippi. Um, but there's a lot more trees up there than people, so, um, and there's kind of a, I think culturally here. Even if like somebody, even if your neighbor being an atheist really bothered you. Keep, there's a the culture here is none, nothing that I do is anybody else's business. Mm-hmm. So I'm just what they do is their business and what I do is my business. Obviously, there are some people who are just assholes that, who will stick their nose in your business. But there's kind of a cultural thing of, you know, just leave me the hell alone. Yeah. So that combined with 
I don't know, something like 49% nuns, uh, and then, which is then, really great. Then there's my high school. We didn't even have a football team. <laughs> I, went all of, Canadian football. I went through all of high school going, what, what's with this football and high school stuff? Because we didn't. Now, mind you, I went to a country bumpkin high school that had 400 <laughs> students on a good year. So <laughs> they couldn't afford the, the bigger schools do have football teams. But yeah, we, we did not. So when we had like like pep rallies and shit, that was for basketball. Because <laughs> we had a basketball team. So <laughs> No hockey? <laughs> No, well, no, we didn't even have a hockey team, which is pretty pathetic, actually, now that I think about it. Huh. Hockey's <laughs> really big here. Yeah, yeah, because you guys get a lot of, you probably get more snow than we do, I would imagine. We get a lot of friggin' snow. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so Thomas, where I live, I'm actually more south than seven border states. Hmm. Like, the entire state like Washington State is more north than I am <laughs> so I'm in the pointy bit that jams into uh, America's backside <laughs> She's that poking. describes you quite well then <laughs> that's what we love about you <laughs> I try I try <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so I, I like to always say our pointy bit sticks up. We're not floppy like Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thomas, how did you go from uh, uh, youth pastor extraordinaire to uh, a guy with a secular YouTube channel? It, well, it wasn't a conscious decision. It wasn't right. something that just happened overnight. It was very long and drawn out. And it involved tons and tons and tons of reading and research and learning and, you know. That'll make Beth happy. <laughs> I listened to a lot of podcasts. I listened to a lot of audiobooks. I, you know, watched a lot of, like, TED Talks as well as atheist YouTubers. And what I found was that a lot of the stuff in my traditional biblical literalist upbringing didn't mesh with what I was learning about how the world actually worked. So I would take courses in physics and I would watch some YouTuber talk about, you know, how we know what the age of the earth is. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. That's something we can test reliably, repeatedly, that we can duplicate in different labs, you know, that works and it comes out to the same result every time. And then you have creationists come along and say, Oh, you know, you can't, carbon dating is not reliable. And the scientists are like, well, no shit. Carbon dating only goes back about 10,000 years given its half-life. But, you know, anything beyond that, you know, we have other methods for dating, other types of radiometric dating that we can use. And even the fact that we have stars that you can, you know, triangulate their position to, you know, billions of light years away and the, the speed of light doesn't change. And they're saying that, you know, oh, well, you know, God just made it like that. What, to, to test our faith? You know, that yeah. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so and you didn't so, just sit there and deny it, because I know some people, when they're confronted with those kinds of, th you know, things like, they'll just be like, oh, well, physics is made up. Or, you know, my teacher's just trying to um, trick me into believing in his liberal mumbo jumbo. So what do you think made you more susceptible to that message? A couple things. First was I had a really liberal youth pastor in high school who basically told me, you know, if you decide if you realize, uh, hey, there actually is a lot of evidence for evolution, you know, he said, you don't have to throw out the baby with the bathwater. You can still you know, maintain your belief system and just think of Genesis as a figurative story. It's not a literal seven days, but it's still right. the method God used was evolution and so on and so forth. And so I was, I was kind of open to that as a possibility, but it once I started to really think about it, though, then the dominoes started falling down. But by that point, I already believed in evolution. It, it made way more sense. There was so much more evidence for it. I think the other part was that my physics professors and the science that I was studying, it wasn't strictly atheist. It wasn't saying, you know, oh, there's, you know, religion is, is bullshit and here's why. It was more of a kind of Stephen Jay Gould style, non-overlapping magisteria. You know, you have religion and you have science and science tells you kind of some stuff about you know how 
everything works. And then religion is kind of how you find meaning in that. And so I was able to, to study this, but then when I realized that some of that stuff actually did conflict with this over here, this made a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. the, the science made a lot more sense. And when I say it, it wasn't a conscious decision, it's sort of like how, you know, if I tell you right now that, you know, Morgan isn't really a, a human being, she's actually, uh, I don't know, an alarm clock. <laughs> I've always suspected you know, that about Morgan. You guys, <laughs> well, you know, I could, I could take, you know, a gun and put it to your head and say, if, if you don't believe that she's an alarm clock right this second, I'm going to blow your brains out. And you're like, no, no, I swear, I swear, you know, I believe it, I believe it, you know, uh, I'll, I'll let her wake me up in the morning and, you know, yeah, but yeah. It's, it doesn't change the fact that you know that that's bullshit. That's right. And you can't, no matter how hard you try to fool yourself, you are still going to believe that she is not an alarm clock because you know enough about alarm clocks and about people and how the world works. Yeah. And so, you know, belief in something like the, the God of the Bible is it's just like that. I can tell you right now, you know, uh, stick a gun to your head and say, you know, if you don't believe that God is, is real, I'm going to blow your brains out. And you're like, ah, I swear I believe it. I believe it. But you know enough about the Bible, you know enough about the contradictions, about the historical inaccuracies, about the scientific inaccuracies, about, you know, logical fallacies, and, and you know, and you read all this stuff enough to know that there may be a God out there. It may be some kind of deistic God, but you can know that the Bible isn't 100% accurate. You can know that it's not this perfect book that's been ordained by an all-knowing deity is the, the perfect way to disseminate uh, information out to his subjects and so no matter how hard you try you can't change that you believe that without mm -hmm. a, a serious amount of of you know new information and evidence to, to the contrary of everything that you know yeah that's what drives me nuts when i get theists who say well you know you chose to be an atheist and you made a bad choice mm -hmm. you just choose to to be a a, a believer I'm like no, it's you just want to live a life of sin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of yes. You just you're choosing to not believe in God because you don't want to be held accountable. Yeah. I'm like, it's or you're, you're going through a rebellious phase. You yeah, know. yeah. Which, yeah. A long phase. <laughs> I think so so often it's the opposite that it's it's the people who not the people but some of the people the the people who say you're an atheist because you don't want to be held accountable. You could say, well, you're a believer because you don't want to be held accountable because mm -hmm. all you have to do is say, Oh, well, gee, I screwed up. Sorry, but I still believe in you, Jesus. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. So who's avoiding accountability? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like you can just get off the hook by believing in fairies. Right. Yeah, right. Believe. You don't have to, you don't have to actually make amends to the people here in this life that you harm you don't have to you, you there's no consequences for you here all you have to do is believe and so you can do whatever you want not to mention sola fide which i know not everybody not all sex ascribe to that but if you're saved no matter what if god decides you're saved you know these people are saved and these people aren't regardless of what they do and there's nothing that you can change that well so much perfect, accountability. perfect example of that, Tracy, is uh, Josh Duggar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he re he recently ca came out, basically came out and said, "Well, I don't have to atone for what I did because you know I'm already forgiven." Right, so God forgives me. And you know, it, it it would be it would be nice, it would be convenient if you know maybe I I have you know huge psychological guilt over. Uh, something that I did to someone who's now passed away and I can't apologize and I can't make amends. If I can just, you know, pray to God and make that guilt go away, that, that that's awfully nice in theory. But how can you say, you know, that that kind of wishful thinking, that you just believe in something because it would be nice to be true and it would be a wonderful thought, how can you not be embarrassed at saying well, that they, you're they, dedicating they, your life to, to wishful thinking? Yeah, mm -hmm. they scapegoat, but it, well, what Josh basically did is he scapegoating and said, "Well, the devil made me do it." Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so it. they have no, they they have no personal responsibility, 
And in, in, in trying to atone, they said, well, the devil made me do it. So I'm right. The devil made me do it, and God forgives me anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. so what if I molested my my sisters and their friends? But if you know, God so is So what adjusted. if they're traumatized for the rest of their life? Yeah. So what? devil made me do it. God forgives me. I'm clear. Now I'm going to molest the next generation of Duggars. If yeah. God is a just God, though then we wouldn't have to worry about any of those sins because it would be the devil's responsibility. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the whole, I don't know, the whole devil thing is just... Well, like, I, I don't know, to me, like... He's like the, a demigod, too. The devil is like Christianity admitting that it's not true. And I'm the lifelong atheist. I've been an atheist all my life. I was never indoctrinated. And so I'm the person on the panel who just, for me, this is all just like <laughs> fascinating, bizarre, because I just, I have no frame of reference for it. But admitting to the devil or like inventing the devil is like an admission that it's not real. Because if God is all powerful, what the hell? Can yeah. you defeat the devil or can't you? If you can't, then you're not all powerful. And if you can, then why are you letting him wreak havoc with people's lives and make them do evil things and then punishing for them, um, punishing them for it? Wait, because, it's just, it's because. so nonsensical. <laughs> it, 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 I mean, it's just so absurd on its face. It's like, it, it's like an admission that go, our God isn't what we say he is, and we know you can prove it, so we're going to throw this thing at you to try to mm. cover our tracks. It's like the whole free will solves every yeah. fucking problem. Like right, it's it, it yeah. that that too, and also another thing is science. Whenever religionists try to claim the mantle of science, they to me that's an admission that you can't defend your faith. You know, you it's, have it's... to turn to empirical evidence, which you say you're not you're not supposed to need. But you're using it because you know you're argue, you're using science because you know that the faith argument can't stand on its own two feet. So it's like you've conceded the argument once you've gone to science. Yeah. It's funny that, that you mention you are a lifelong atheist. And so you're looking at this from kind of the outsider's perspective, trying to make sense of what's on the other side. And I see this all the time in my travels is, you know, I'll, I might live somewhere for a few years and some new group will come in of, you know, foreigners and they're like, oh my God, like, you know, this new place, uh, here's all the problems and here's all these solutions and they know exactly how to fix it and everything that's wrong with it. And then they might stick around and suddenly they, they start to understand the culture and then they come back to the States and they're looking at their own culture through the looking glass. They're like, oh, this is so messed up. If only we did it like these people and they feel like they're enlightened. Well, growing up overseas, I went back and forth and back and forth, you know, every couple of years. So I'd have culture shock, counter culture shock, counter counter culture shock. And you start to, to kind of get a better idea of like how the world works. And as I was leaving my religion, I guess I had kind of the, the benefit of having that experience because I, I didn't just walk away from my faith. I flip flopped back and forth and back and forth. I was like, well, I don't really necessarily believe in a literal Bible. Maybe I don't believe in God. Well, I think maybe there is a God. I'm going to give this another shot. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to go back to, to church and youth group and sing some uh, young adults group or whatever. And that process, I think, kind of refines the way that you look at it because you see the looking glass from both sides. Um, but it's... I mean, even still now, you know, now that I, like the longer that I'm out, the crazier it looks and the crazier mm -hmm. this stuff sounds. I'm like, how could I have ever believed this for well, so and, and it's, fucking long? It's, and, you know, the same thing for me, the more I study and learn and research, you would think I would say, oh, well, OK, yeah, I get that. But it's the opposite. The more I learn, the stranger it seems. The crazier well, it becomes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, the more I learn, the stranger it is. I've studied a lot of um, social psychology, neuroscience, um, you know, tr trying to understand how the brain works, uh, neuropsychology. And like when you realize just the kinds of crazy things that people are capable of, of believing and following and why, then it starts to kind of make sense. You start to see the origins and the evolution of these, these belief systems, the, the mimetic evolution, if you will. Of, of religion 
you know, and which religions are going to survive and which aren't. And it's, it's the ones that, that threaten you with a fear of eternal damnation. If you even question or doubt it. Yeah. Those are the ones who people are going to be afraid to doubt. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. I mean, I always laugh when I come across a, uh, you know, a Muslim who's like, Islam is the fastest growing religion. I'm like, well, first of all, you're not allowed to leave it and keep your head. So, you know, what do you expect? Kind of well, thing. Yeah, first of all, and, they, and they convert by, by the point of a gun or knife. Well, first well, of all, atheism is actually countries. the fastest growing. Yes, you're right. It's the nuns that yes. are the fastest growing. And yes. that's what I usually like to come up with. Oh, really? You know, you need to do some more reading. And I would, I would challenge them to go throughout the Muslim world and do a blind survey in any country and yeah. say, do you literally believe that the Quran is 100%? And if, if there's no consequences and there's no way to trace it back to, to anyone, I think you'd be surprised how many millions of exactly. so-called Muslims don't believe yeah. in, in the book, don't well, follow the book, don't he, believe even right. in the uh, uh, My friend Ali Rizvi, um, who is uh, one quarter of the secular jihadists from the Middle East, if you've ever heard of them. I love um, their show. Aren't they awesome? It's one of my uh, favorite. Ali's a friend of mine and uh, he, he, when he speaks, like I've, I've been fortunate because I live nearby. I can go to, I've been to several of his speeches where he talks about his, but oh yeah, you were at INR, you saw him. Yep. And uh, the, you know, where you heard him talk then about how the, just the thousands of emails that he gets, like literally thousands. And that's just Ali. Armin gets thousands of emails. Yep, Faisal yep. gets thousands of emails. Yasmin. I'm yep. sure Yasmin gets thousands of emails. And I know Ali's wife, Alishba, gets thousands of emails. Mm. All from people in Islamic countries who are saying, I don't believe this shit, but I'd like to like keep living. So yep, yep. I'm pretending I'm a Muslim, but thank you for saying the things that I am not allowed to say. Yep, and yep. and every time I come across some, you know, holier than thou Muslim who's like, oh, Islam is gonna take over the world and you can't stop us, and I'm just like <clears throat> You got no idea, buddy. <laughs> well, I, I think Ali made, made it very clear, and, and I've noticed on some of his posts on, on his uh, Facebook page with the title of his book, Atheist Muslim. Mm -hmm. And he, he's taken some flack for that title, even from, uh, I'll say, your Muslim apologists. And it's like people just don't get the idea that, you know, it's conversion by the sword. You either convert or they're going to lop your head off. So no, it's well, not they, they don't normally. Um, it's apostasy is punishable by death, but you're not forced to convert. You're forced to either convert or pay a tax under Sharia law. Yeah. Um, well, that, but, that's the rea that's the reality of it. But there are stories coming out where they have been for they either have to convert or they do kill you. Now it's not that many. But it's enough to make people take notice, and it's your your more fringe fundamentalist. I mean, most people, even even groups like ISIS or you know Boko Haram, they're they're not um, necessarily. They're not the mainstream. They're not advocating for the death of every single person who doesn't believe, but they see it as a much 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 bigger slight, a much bigger offense if you're they see a, a traitor. Uh, yes. an apostate who left yeah. the faith, yeah. who was a Muslim yeah. and then abandoned yeah. it. And so, you know, I don't really get a whole lot of death threats from Muslims because I was never a Muslim. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Armin and Ali and the rest of them, like, they get those all the time. You know, yeah. every well, single day, pretty much. Like, I, I've talked about this with Alishba before, because Alishba is a, a Pakistani ex-Muslim woman, and she and I will say virtually the identical things on Facebook, and she'll get death threats and people who will report her page and get her shut down. I've never had a death threat, ever. Mm -hmm. And I get... Uh, what I end up actually with is 
two kinds of, of, well, I get the ones that just say fuck you and block you, which is fine. Mm -hmm. And then I get the ones that they're falling all over themselves because for some reason, even though I'm extremely blunt with what I think of Islam, they seem to think they can win me over and, and somehow change my mind, which boggles yeah. me. I, I don't know that but but yeah and and the only like she and i have a very similar style um you know we we're both canadian women and and you know we say virtually the same things but she is a pakistani ex-muslim yeah. and i'm a white chick mm -hmm. and that's the difference she gets all the vitriol and I virtually get none. So to me, that's why I, I'm like, okay, I'll knock it up a notch then because I can do it, you know? Yeah. Well, and that's what's been extremely frustrating to me is seeing people on the left completely silent about it. Like yes. they're, they're so scared of, you know, political correctness and, oh, no, we don't want to, you know, offend, you know, this, this subset of people. But what they don't realize is, one, Islam isn't a race. You know, I, I, I knew, you know, this this middle aged white guy living in Texas who was a practicing Muslim, you know, who's born and raised in, in the US. You know, I, I've known Muslims from, you know, everywhere from from Pakistan to, you know, to Egypt and, you know, someone from Pakistan, they're not an Arab. Yeah. You know, being Arab is, you know, that's that's your race, you know, being Pakistani, you know, or, or being, you know, if you're, uh, you know or Bangladesh or whatever. Uh, yeah. I think, in, in fairness, in it's, fairness, uh, there are plenty of voices on the left who do acknowledge the the dangers and what makes Islam unique. There, there, um, are, there but are voices. There, there are. I think it's also legitimate to be concerned in the age of Trump to be very cautious to separate criticism of Islam from criticism of Muslims when Muslim people are and people who people look think they look like Muslims you know yeah. in the United States we've had two issues of sick men uh, Sikh I'm sorry being shot and in one case uh, murdered because somebody thought he was Muslim so I think it's I think it's fair to be cautious in how we address the issue of Islam well, that, so that, that we are separating Muslim people from the religion I, of Islam. I think most of us do. I, I know, like, as I say, I'm very blunt, but I'm also very clear with that. So. Right. I will never say, you know, Muslims are blah, blah, blah. I always focus Islam is but but but. Yeah, and well, I'll go straight after the Quran itself. I'll quote the surah. Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. well and like, for example, for example, Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he just can't win. You know, he's a pretty good example of a liberal Muslim who we should be supporting you know he's pro lgbt he's you know he's he's got a lot of progressive ideas and he's still a muslim and yet like if you read his mentions in twitter uh no matter what he says it's all well yeah but that's your religion so it, it's all your fault and until you completely renounce islam it it this is on you and then, so and then I, to me, that's really hypocritical because we say we want liberal and reformist Muslims to speak up, but then they speak up and they're told you're not doing enough. Unless you completely renounce Islam, then you might as well be ISIS. And or so we're setting them up for a no-win situation. I don't know. I, I see people I like the Imam of Peace who, you know, he's still a, a Muslim imam. And he, you know, will post, you know, very, very progressive liberal stuff. And I know a lot of people, you know, ex-Muslims as well as atheists who retweet his stuff and follow him and like his, his content. Because they see, you know, he's pushing for reform the same way, you know, someone like Majid Nawaz is or Sam Harris exactly. is. And then you get somebody like Majid Nawaz who speaks up and says, hey, 
let's try reforming some stuff. And then he gets labeled an anti-Muslim extremist. Like, what the fuck? He's actually <laughs> suing the SPLC. Yes. The yes. It's, I, I, it's about damn time. And I, uh, I, yeah, I, I wish I, 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 I her have a minority well. opinion on this. Yeah. I have a more. Uh, yeah, I have, I have a minority. A, I, I don't know. May, I, maybe I don't have a minority opinion on it. Um, but I think that that lawsuit is. I I don't approve. No. Why is that? Yeah. They're, I mean, I, they, they've I literally called win. out someone with you know he something. That... Being wrong is not the same thing as being defamatory or being libelous for one thing but, i think i i absolutely think they are wrong i will grant that i think they are wrong there's a big difference between being wrong and committing libel and for somebody who claims to be a free speech absolutist if you read the statement that he put out that said people are going to learn that they can't go around calling people names and get away with it but that's what free speech is, is calling people names and getting away with it. That's what it is. Uh -huh. And this lawsuit, this idea of if you say something about me that I don't like, I'm going to sue you. That is the exact no, same kind of excess. Let me finish. Uh -huh. That's the exact same kind of excess that he criticizes the left for. So I think it's, ex first of all, I think it's dead on arrival. The lawsuit's dead on arrival. Second of all, it's the people he's asking to pay the money for it who are taking the risk. He's not this isn't he's not funding this lawsuit. He's asking his followers to fund this lawsuit. And third of all, I think it's extremely hypocritical for somebody who claims to be a free speech absolutist to say, you said something about me that I don't like, so I'm going to sue you. I, I just find it ridiculously hypocritical and I think it's a huge uh, hit to his credibility. I see. I, I couldn't disagree with you more, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, there, there, I I agree with you that there's a difference between being wrong on something and you know defamation of character and and libel. But they're not just saying you know oh Majid is wrong about this or his opinion's wrong about this. They're literally labeling him as you know a, a hate group as an extremist. They're, yeah. they're saying that, you know, th they are putting him in a category that is damaging his character. Does it, does it matter? Not an anti-Muslim extremist. He himself is a Muslim. It's demonstrably false. It's a lie that is hurting his character. It's hurting his credibility. It's it's making it harder for him to, um, to connect to certain platforms. People don't want to associate with members of hate groups or extremists. There's so a difference between somebody being wrong and somebody lying. There's a difference between an error and a lie. So Let's legally, legally the wait, wait, look, Morgan's the lawyer in the group. Let's yeah, hear from Morgan. Let's, let's ask the law student. Well, I, I, <laughs> I want to I finish this this, okay. this last kind of sentence, and that's, you know, if if I come out and I say, you know, that you are a child molester, I have literally put you in a category, this horrible category that just damages your career for life. And it makes and no one want to associate with you. But if I say you're an anti-Muslim bigot racist Apples and oranges. group, it does the exact same thing and it's just as no, wrong. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. Morgan? Apples okay. and oranges. So I think that this lawsuit's dead. Um, I do. I what? I think the SPLC was wrong to say that he was a anti-Muslim extremist. I think that was wrong. But he has no case legally. Because as long as because he, he's missing on the element of um, basically showing the intent hmm. um, and SPLC does have documents showing that they have gone why they labeled him an anti-Muslim extremist based on statements and things he said and um, things that he's written. And they did, you know, they've done research into it. So there's no negligence there or intent to say something demonstrably false. So if I say you're a child molester, well, your best defense to, you know, a claim of libel or defamation is the truth. You can, you know, pretty much prove, no, I'm not, and that it's defamatory. Well, you don't and have also, to prove that you're innocent until guilty, or till proven guilty. Not in civil court. It's a probable cause. And also, there's a higher standard for public figures. It's harder for public figures to sue for def def defamation because um, what we want is a free press in this country. And so what this 
these libel laws are built to basically protect reporters from, you know, being sued by people like, say, Donald Trump, who wants to say, oh, you said something mean about me. I'm suing you for defamation. Hmm. Um, so if you're a public figure, it's a higher standard. And yeah. if you're a public figure, it depends on if the SPLC is labeling you, then that's very likely that they consider you a public figure. They're not going through and finding random, you know, Pippi the Frog accounts on Twitter and labeling them and, you know, anti-whatever extremists. So it's going to be, he has a hard hill to climb. And like I said, I disagree with the SPLC's decision. But also I'm kind of questioning Majid's motives here because I do see that he is asking his followers to help raise this legal money. And, um, I think that his attorneys know that this is going to be a tough hill to climb. And I think the SPLC, um, they haven't offered any settlement. So this case might settle, but it may not. It just, it, and the SPLC, I mean, literally, I almost got a job there as a legal aide, essentially. So, um, yeah, they have an army of lawyers. So I'm pretty sure they know that this case is going to be dead as soon as it hits, you know. A, a judge's desk and I think they're banking on that so and I, I think that yeah. something that is deli the it, it's deliberately intended to have a chilling effect on speech the intent of that lawsuit is to have a chilling effect on speech don't call people racist don't call people Nazi don't call people because if you do we're going to sue you we're going to threaten you with financial ruin if you say what you think. And for, for somebody who claims to support free speech to be basically bullying. But isn't the, the, the race card pulled as a way to silence free speech? You know, people say, oh, you know, the second that you bring up something negative about Islam and you're shouted down as an Islamophobe for criticizing an idea, that is a way of them trying to suppress your opinion, trying to just throw you in this box or this category. And but sometimes people are racist. Sometimes people's criticism of Islam is racist. Not sometimes of Islam, it of, of, is. of Muslims. Not, yeah, of Muslims, not Islam. Some people make it about race. And whether or not you think it, the idea of what you think of people throwing around the word racist too casually that idea aside you know that that objection aside once you start filing lawsuits to prevent people from using the word racist that's a whole different ball game but because your intent suing. is your intent is to chill free speech he's that is a fundamentally anti-free speech he's not suing effort. a newspaper he's not yeah. suing you know it doesn't a, a matter news publication. it doesn't matter he's not suing, he's an suing individual. a public entity who the has plc has they they should be held to a higher standard because they're literally destroying your life and your career by and so should he and i think you'd be hard pressed to show that his career has been ruined by this effort by well, the spl you, know, you have to show economic damages as well. He ha you can't just uh, has pay he lost someone followers? Has he lost followers? Has he lost oh, his sure. job? I'm sure he has. He uh, actually so, sure or has he? Some, someone like, you know, for, uh, another example is uh, when the Wall Street Journal published an article saying that, that PewDiePie was a, a Nazi or a Nazi sympathizer. And it was I don't think they called him a Nazi sympathizer, or, but he he had a and like a like an oven joke or something. No, I don't know enough about it, but it was I, I'm not gonna go yeah. into all of it right now. He um, was, I have to head out fairly soon. Him yeah. being cut loose by Disney was completely reasonable for them. If he they okay, find him not, to be a damage to his brand, if they find somebody to be a damage to their brand, they're well within their rights to cut ties. They're within their rights, yes. But what I'm saying is so, that, that that did you know even though he's still the largest YouTuber out there, that cost him millions of dollars. So it's it's well then he should use better judgment than to have Holocaust didn't happen he's a comic. jokes. He's a comic. He's a and comedian. they are Disney and they Comics. have a right if he it's not look, Always it's not the people the who said it's not the people who said he's an anti Semite that was his problem. Down, it though. was the fact that he whether he whether he is or isn't an anti Semite is irrelevant because he did something that was damaging to their brand and they have a right to cut him loose. And if he lost money because of that, that's because of his judgment, not because of the people who said 
he has shitty judgment. They can see for themselves, and their army of lawyers can see for themselves, that's damaging our brand, and we're cutting him loose. Whether or not I call him an anti-Semite is irrelevant. They can see that what he did was damaging to their brand, and they cut him loose. Look, That's I, on him. Have, Let's not have, absolve him of his responsibility for dozens, what he did. I have dozens of videos. PewDiePie has hundreds of videos. I'm sure someone could sift through my content and cherry pick out a couple of quotes and a couple things out of context and misrepresent it exactly like the Wall Street Journal did. The fact is the Wall Street Journal is hurting by creators like this who are getting way more watch time and they're getting piddly squat now. You know, they're they're in dollar is suffering. So they're going after the big creators. They're going after the creators and they're trying to misrepresent them. And it's it's false they statements. Stop misrepresenting. False statements. He did what he did and no, they didn't like it and they fired him. What's that? How do you did, misrepresent uh, that? He did what he did. They didn't like it. They said if I take one of your quotes out of context and I twist it's it around and edit it and make it, but there's no but it, was, it's not context. it was, it was very much out of context. Go back and watch all of his original videos. I don't have to watch his original I videos. I, all I have to do is see the thing that says, nice. you know, send everybody to the ovens. Ha ha. Isn't that funny? No, it's not funny. It didn't say send everyone to Whatever the ovens. Whatever it was. Okay. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. You don't, you're not even familiar with the guys. The <laughs> Like I, I honestly, I, I don't know anything about that situation at all because I don't follow PewDiePie at all. So I I'm, don't. I mean, I don't either. So, but then, then I guess, yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, <laughs> Thomas has to go soon. Um, <laughs> uh, is there... I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm I'm backing down from you know as things. No, no, up. no. But I, I had about an hour or so, and I'm going to meet some people. But no, no, I'm, I'm happy to come on again, though, and continue the. Yeah, this is not no, fun. No, I'm done. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. It's all yeah. right. It's all right. I, you know, disagreeing's okay, and that that's one of the things that drives me crazy. Yeah. Is people think that you know if you disagree, then it's like the end of the world. Well, and you know, the most interesting podcasts that people tune into a lot of times are the ones where you don't agree on everything. So yeah. I, I think while I, you know, we're, we're talking about free speech and free speech absolutism, I may not agree with your opinion, but I'll fight for your right to, to say it. And I think that's what, that's one thing I love about, about America at least. Exactly. So. Exactly. Um, if so we, if we all agreed, we'd be pretty boring people. Oh hell yeah! It'd be kind of like, it'd be kind of like church. <laughs> Ew. So, and before you go, um, you know, you you've got a lot of uh, good content on there. Um, some sciencey stuff. Um, I liked the one you just did about the the sort of nine basics of evolution. I think that's a good one for anybody who's confronted, you know, with creationists, you know, and want you want to have something in your back pocket that you can haul out. That that's a good one. Um, do you have any any ones that you're particularly proud of or think that you you really hit the nail on the head with? Well, so I the ones that that I have that are are science heavy, I you know, are some of my favorites. Like I, I did one about the fine tuning argument. I just watched that one too. And, and I did one on near death experiences and one on sleep paralysis. And those take longer to make because, you know, I, I, I spend about a month just doing research and just reading yeah. just dozens of journal articles, trying to, you know, learn all this stuff before presenting it. Cause I don't want to misrepresent something. I don't want to mislead people. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I just have rants and those are, are fun too, but absolutely. The rants <laughs> tend to be more popular, <laughs> oddly <laughs> enough. I love the fine tuning one because that argument always drives me crazy too. And it's like, no, we were fine tuned for the damn earth, dumbass. Like that's yeah. how evolution works. That's how dumbass. natural selection works is, you know, you exactly. get into the, the little crevices of. Exactly. I always like the one, oh, look at that what mud puddle. You know, the water was finely tuned just to fit yeah. right in that, you know, the or Douglas the, the, Adams quote. Yeah, the mud puddle was finely tuned to fit that water. Like, yeah. no. <laughs> well uh you know thanks for hanging out with us i appreciate it is there anything else uh, you had to say before you go or, and please you know uh, we've got a link to your channel in the description but if you want to shout out any other like social media or whatever 
Yeah, I, I think I kind of would like to end on a note of just saying, you know, we're we're all fighting, you know, the same cause. We're fighting against, you know, this fundamentalist extremism of saying, you know, don't question, you know, just take it, don't doubt, believe it on faith. And questions are what cause us to to find the truth. If something's true, it'll withstand any scrutiny we throw at it. So, you know, in the free marketplace of ideas, we're able to have these disagreements, we're able to have these conversations, come away from it, hopefully still amicably, and get, uh, you know, I, I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong about this. And, but all it's, it's by engaging that we, we find out mm -hmm. if we are, or if we aren't, and we research more and we learn more and, and we grow. So I'd, I, you know, encourage your audience to, you know, never stop questioning stuff. Uh, if you want to engage with me, you can find me on Twitter at Holy Kool-Aid. Uh, Facebook slash Holy Kool Aid or Holy Kool Aid .com. and my my YouTube channel is Holy Kool Aid. So, yeah, don't drink awesome. the Kool Aid. Yes, you always you always end your videos with "Don't drink the Kool Aid." <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Yeah, thank you guys, and thank you for what you do. Thank you as well. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. There we go. I didn't come prepared for a full legal analysis of uh, Majid Dawa's okay. lawsuit, Sorry. but that's no, okay. it's fine. I I don't don't say by by and by the way, I looked it up on Google. Uh, the PewDiePie video was him with a sign in the background that says death to all Jews. So I'd like to understand what context death to all Jews is okay. Yeah, because yeah, I remember I read just something wondering. about just, that, but I was curious. like, did I read that wrong? Or was Death that, there's so many Nazis Jews. running around on Twitter, I can't keep up lately. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, I was like, was that him? Or was that Richard Spencer? Or, like, they, they all get mixed up in my head sometimes. But, yeah, legally, um, I did a legal analysis of it on By Skeptical, if anybody wants to hear that. Andrew Torres, um, I haven't gotten to that episode yet. But Andrew Torres has a, um, I think, on the, the, analysis the of the lawsuit. Yes. On opening arguments, yeah, he did a um, far better legal analysis than I just gave. In my opinion, I think it's, I think it's dead because he can't show um, that they had reckless disregard of the truth or that they um, intended to smear him for their own. Yeah, and like, like that's the that's the tricky part with something like that is it's an opinion and like okay my guilty pleasure is I love watching people's court and Judge Judy which I know is not entirely real but it is based on some real law and that's one of the things like you know it, Judge Judy will often say when somebody tries to sue for defamation it's like well that's their their real opinion. You yeah, know. there's a difference between saying, I think that this person is saying, you know, anti-Muslim views and this person is a rapist, you know, <laughs> like one of them. Right, that's why, the child molester, that's why the child molester comparison failed. Yeah, that was a bad, that was legal, a, that was a a bad legal analogy. And right. I don't know if he was trying to make a legal argument, but it sounded like it because, if we, I mean, we were discussing a lawsuit. So, you know, I have to bring in the what the law says. And yeah, it's a it's a apples and oranges legally. Oh, um, Thomas just posted, he said, to clarify, uh, the death to all Jews context is that he was making a point people would post anything via Fiverr for five bucks. So Fiverr is a website where you offer some kind of service for the nominal fee of five bucks. So a lot of people will say, hey, because they want to say get their art out or their writing or something. So I'll write, you know, a, 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 a bio for you for five bucks or I'll make a logo for you for five bucks. So what he's saying, PewDiePie's point was people will post anything for five bucks. And he said um, he was visibly shocked and disturbed that they actually did it. And yet that's what he asked them to do. And they did it. And it's Disney. Okay. These and are the Donald it. Duck. These are the, you know, the, these are the yeah, Cinderella I, people. I so whether, whether his intent was anti-Semitic or not, what he did was incredibly stupid and tactless and offensive uh -huh. to a great many people and disney was well within their rights to say 
this is unacceptable. Right. You are damaging but our no, brand. So no, bye bye. But, but nobody is saying that Disney is not within their rights to do that. The point is that the the newspaper or news organization that reported that reported it in an irresponsible manner that caused Disney to make that decision. That's Disney what, would have made Disney, I'm Disney pretty sure, would have made way. that decision one way or the other, irrespective of the Wall Street Journal comp. And why if no, they would have done he that could have had them post. He could have had them put up anything ridiculous and outrageous, you know, like my mother sucks cock or whatever. But yeah. he didn't. He's the one who said, have a hold up a sign that says death to all Jews. Okay. He might have thought it was funny, but it's not it's outrageous to suggest that it would take some degree of anti Semitism to come up with that as being a funny joke. Right. That's but not an outrageous accusation. And it's Disney. I think it's pretty I, I think it's it's pretty reasonable to assume that Disney would have cut him loose regardless of what the Wall Street Journal had to say about maybe, it. Maybe. But the point is is that the Wall Street Journal and I'm I'm only going by what I've heard from Thomas and you, but basically they came out and said he was a Nazi. Am I am I wrong? Because I, I doubt they that didn't call him Wall Street they didn't call Journal him came out and said okay. somebody's a Nazi. Oh, that doesn't sound like okay. Wall Street Journal. I, I don't know anything about them, so I, I really don't I think there may have been an opinion piece about it, but I think Wall Street Journal said that he um you know, he posted the sign. It said, "Death to all Jews," and Disney canceled our contract. I can see them being anti-Semitic. Yeah, but Disney ma ma makes you sign a contract saying basically, if you do any of this stupid ass shit, and they're very clear in their terms of what they define as stupid ass shit, um, they will cut you off. So regardless, right. so if you have to cry, to cry smells anything off. They will cut you off private. because they're a family oh, company and they want to be as friendly as possible. They're not going to have oh, somebody that's, you know, again, like even I if you are an edgy comedian, Disney doesn't want that. But I'm and saying, you lost money because you're stupid, then stop being stupid. Yeah, I mean, nobody is saying that Disney did anything wrong. They're within their rights that if their standards aren't being met, then they have a right to to terminate somebody. It's, it's, and, it's similar to the Duck Dynasty flap. As yeah. far as that goes, they they have a standard. Oh yeah, that guy. And, and you you've seen a, a couple people like the whole chick-fil-a thing where the guy went through the drive through in chick-fil-a and the next day he lost his job well he violated his company standards that aspect of it, it it doesn't sound like anybody has any issue with as far as what disney did but so whether wall street did or did not say it doesn't sound like i mean without digging into all the legal papers does not sound like that's what they based their decision solely on it may have influenced them it, when you get into defamation libel any of that stuff you're 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 telling a very uh yeah i have a story up here it just said it had anti-semitic language Okay. Yeah, they didn't call him a Nazi. Yeah, they didn't call him a Nazi. No. I have the article right here. Okay. Well, then that's kind of. So it just says it says the sub the the subhead is move came after the journal asked about videos in which he included anti-Semitic jokes or Nazi imagery. Nazi imagery. So that and I I've got, I hit a paywall, so I can't see okay. the rest. No, of the that's understandable. Yeah, well, but well, if it's Nazi pay, imagery, yeah. then it's Nazi imagery. But if, okay, if it's, so it's, if it's not the Wall Street Journal's fault that PewDiePie right. is stupid. Right. But now Nazi imagery is very, very specific. We're talking swastikas, um, you know, the, the eagle symbol and, and things like that. That's very specific. Right. So and I can't read the rest of the article because I had a paywall. Well, so that's yeah, no, no, I understand. But let's just going by that. If it said death to all Jews, that's not Nazi imagery. Now, I know it's just a But shitty. that's not necessarily the only one. That's the one that I right. was able to see. Right. I understand that. I understand that. But my understanding is that it was only one one message in one video. As I, I don't know. But that's that was my understanding up until now. Now, if there's more videos and they have more proof, that's a lot more murky but one video that says death to all jews because he was trying to make a point about fiverr 
that's not Nazi imagery. So that's a little iffy to me. But like you said, we only have part of the article, so it's hard to say if they expand on that later on. But just by that sentence, I I would say that's a that's not quite accurate. But it's still shitty. Well, it, it, and it still means that Disney was it, within their right to do what they did. I'm just saying that what the Wall Street Journal said, if that's how they leave it, isn't necessarily accurate. And I think that brings out a good point is, and I'm not picking on anybody here, but in general, like I know when I post stories, a lot of people think, oh, I, you know, and I do headline hunt, but I also dig deeper in before I post a story. And it's like the way our media and not just the mainstream, uh, you know, CNN. Oh, like he has done other shit. Oh, he, yeah, he has. Okay. So I'm reading another, it says several videos posted several videos featuring anti-Semitic or neo-Nazi quote-unquote jokes, including one where he paid two men to hold a death to all Jews sign. Another video features a man dressed as Jesus saying Hitler did absolutely nothing wrong. Okay, that's two. And he also has another one that says, it's a little bit ironic that Jews somehow found another way to fuck Jesus over. I don't know what the fuck that even means, but... Yeah. Um, Yes, so we've yeah, got a it, it's a weird here. theme. It's a weird theme to have, you know. And also, he included an audio clip of the Nazi Party anthem while bowing over a swastika as part of the secret summoning ritual. Okay, that's weird. He also included a very brief Nazi salute with a Hitler voiceover saying Sieg Heil and the text Nazi confirmed. So, yeah, and, and I, I, yeah. There's so none of this was the Wall Street Journal calling him a no, Nazi. No. It was an accurate description of his content. That's fine. And also, Wall Street Journal reported it after Disney had already fired him. Well, yeah. okay. well, well, one quick question, both to Tracy and Morgan. How many articles or search articles did you just go through to find those? Just roughly. doesn't have to be accurate. Not very many. How it many comes pages? right up. Yeah, first page. Yeah. And oh yeah. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is that you had to go and literally find more information to confirm or deconfirm your point of view. No, I and only, I, think, I had to search. No, I only had to search more because I couldn't. I had a paywall. I couldn't read the Wall well, Street Journal article. Yeah, it would have all I'm been right there. Though, what I'm saying though is that most people would just have taken that paywalled Wall Street Journal article and just run with it. You guys went a to step further and that's part of the problem I think we have with our uh, whether it's good or bad I mean not making a judgment call is that a lot of people will not take that extra step you know yeah. whether I agree with your point and I'm not saying I do or don't but it is kind of mood is people are just going for the headlines and that's as far as they go you guys took it and tried to oh let's see you know it, and that's a good thing and, and I, I think yeah, that's I probably sure. true. I think that's probably true. But I, and, I do think the Wall Street Journal headline was accurate. It was an yeah. it didn't say PewDiePie is a Nazi and an anti semite. It said Disney cuts ties with PewDiePie because of anti Semitic and Nazi imagery, and that's accurate. That seems and I think like that's what yeah. Disney what described yeah. it as. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'm saying, though, is you guys took that extra step, and a lot of people in today's culture, for lack of a better word, don't do that. And it's one of the most frustrating things, because I've actually had people say, oh, well, you're just headline shopping. I'm like, well, yes and no, but I'm also looking for other confirmation of this story. I don't, you know, and I think that's what gets lost, especially in a lot of these uh, socio and cultural aspects, especially concerning Islam and, and, and and uh, the Muslim religion is, is we don't have that. Even in science, I mean, I mean, flat Earth is making a resurgence. Uh, zero, oh, yeah. or the, theory, the whole theory of gravity bullshit is making a resurgence. Mm -hmm. Just be uh, goop. I mean, Gwyneth Paltrow's goop bullshit. She attacked the doctor when uh, John Gunther uh, wrote a piece, you know, knocking Physically? down goop. Because no. <laughs> oh, oh, she was like attacking doctors, literally. It's like, what a yeah. culture, that bitch done gone crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, she, I mean, she wants people to shove glitter up their hoo-ha, 
or use it. Oh, with that, the, I don't think that was Gwyneth Paltrow, but Gwyneth Paltrow yeah, did a similar jade. thing. Yeah, but it does sound like yeah, something she did. Yeah. Well, the the jade egg. Okay, jade yes, is one of her. the most porous minerals or uh, the what's the word? I'm, gemstones out there, and she wants you to stick it up your hoo ha. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. For, for I mean, but what I'm saying is, John Gunther, as a legitimate uh, doctor, not attacked, but deconstructed the the stuff that she's promoting, and cultural, you know, punched back saying, "Oh, you know, your typical pseudoscience." And now there's a uh, an initiative, but people aren't going beyond the headline; they're just reading the headline, and that's what's informing their opinion. And I think in, with an issue concern, surrounding Islam, specifically, we have to go deeper than that. Yeah, that's what I have problems with the pages like Occupy Democrats and like the other 98% and things like that. Because I don't even like, bother with those. Yeah, they are just crazy. Because remember after um, Trump won, they were like, basically, I think um, Huffington Post, uh, somebody wrote a satire headline just to show how people will just pay attention to the headline. And it was like, Bernie Sanders can become president with this one weird trick. And then it was like, in the article, he wrote, you stupid motherfuckers, quit sharing shit just because of a headline. Like, from all these <laughs> yeah. weird sites. Like, awesome. they'd be like, Hillary Clinton can still be president if we impeach Trump. And I was like, that's not how anything works. Like, yeah. what? That'd be well, nice. And I, I, I think it goes back to, to Gleb's whole thing about the, the, the truth contract is that, you know, we have to, as humans, you don't even have to be an atheist, but we have to go beyond that. And I think that's why the discussion between Tracy and Thomas was important. While they may disagree, it's still bringing that notion. It, it's got my interest peaked to find out what the fuck's going on. Yeah. And a lot of people would just, you know, in general, would just poo-poo it away. Say, oh, they just don't agree over X, Y, or Z, and leave it at that. And I think that's part of the problem. That's part of the problem, you know, I have with our current administration. And it's not just Trump. I mean, his whole administration is corrupt, in my opinion. But uh, too many people are. That's becoming the norm. And I, I think discussions like what we had with Tracy and Thomas, I think, are important. I well, mean, for me, they, the whether the you heart agree, of, the heart of movement atheism for me from the beginning has always been, or oh, oh, this is this is this is what and what I thought it was, and this is what I think it should be, is not just to sort of own, you know, theists and haha, look how stupid you are because you believe this stuff or. Uh, it's to defeat religion because with the goal of making the world a better place, right? Mm -hmm. So evidence-based thinking to make the world better because if you are basing your decisions on things that are real and empirical and provable uh, and logical and rational, then everybody's making better decisions. And it doesn't mean we're going to be right all the time. And it doesn't mean that religion is the only, obviously with, you know, Beth knows all about, you know, the pseudoscience and there's a whole other realm that goes beyond religion. But if we are focused on that part of it, and I think to a large degree, movement atheism has sort of lost sight of the, focus on evidence wherever it takes you, even if it challenges your own worldview, even if it makes you feel uncomfortable. These are the things that we say, these are the things we admonish theists for not doing, right? Like, you know, choose, I'd rather, I'd rather live with an uncomfortable truth and a comforting lie. But if that stops with the God question, then that doesn't move the needle enough. We need to, that, that's supposed to, you know, that's, that needs to be the approach for everything across the board. And so, you know, I always try to hold myself, and obviously I'm sure I fail a lot of the time, but I try to hold myself to that standard. And I worry that we are sort of losing sight of that as a movement. Mm -hmm. Well, see, and I don't know if I'm going to agree or disagree with how I'm going to phrase it.
I think that's plus with, and Dob, you and I have discussed this with the whole atheist plus movement. To me, atheism is one thing and one thing over. It's disbelief yeah. in God. And that's it. Anything else you want to tack onto it, that's extraneous bullshit. Atheism is one thing. Does that make us better or worse? Depends on your point of view. But when we start tacking on, well, I'm atheist plus this, that, or the other thing. I'm an atheist and a skeptic. Okay, that's two different things. Like, my my activism as far as, okay, my keyboard warrior and warriorism is I, I can't get out and do things, but being gay has nothing to do with me being an atheist. Right. Being atheist has nothing to do with me being gay. I was this way even when I was a believer. Okay. Having a mental illness and fighting for elimination of the stig stigma surrounding mental illness has nothing to do with me being an atheist. All, all being an atheist is, is I don't believe in God. However you want to term it, I've heard it termed so many different ways I get confused. <laughs> That's it. That's all it is. I, keep it simple. It's like you know, we can't make it something it's not. Are people that do the atheist plus, for lack of a better word, wrong? No. You got to do what works for you. And, and, and that's one of the hardest things because I know with blogging, I, I, I lose myself because I have so many side interests. What, part of it could be, you know, my atheism does influence what I'm interested in. But it doesn't. It's like, it's like I think we've lost that simplicity be, behind what being an atheist is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the opposite with that because I can't just put one aspect of me in just one little box and just be like, okay, my atheism is here. And then um, my stance on other things is like my such as being a humanist is here. I can't do that. I have well, more I think, of an intersecting I think one infor thing. Yeah, one informs the other. But being a humanist to me, like for me, I, and I can compartmentalize. In fact, it's probably one of my biggest faults because I compartmentalize too much. And it's just like, uh, as an example, when my mom died, people are like, I have friends that, uh, that you know, when, when someone in their face, they're a mess for like two or three years afterwards. I'm like, eh, yeah, my mom died two years. And it's like, it, it's just easier for me to do that, and I think it all depends on how our, our minds work. But yeah, it, yeah, I, I'm terrible at compartmentalizing. I probably shouldn't, but I do. <laughs> and yeah, see, and I just kind of let everything run together. But I mean, then again, I have different mental things, so <laughs> probably opposite of Beth's it, actually. Well, and I that's probably it. why you're going into law. Well, and I look at law, it. To, to me is is I, I'm very specific about you know I kind of agree with Beth that atheism is one thing but yeah. I think that religion causes so many issues that that one thing will probably solve most of the other satellite issues so to me that's where I think the focus should be, at least for me, because I think that one thing is, is going to cause such a domino effect that the other issues are just going to, they're going to be affected for the positive anyway. So, yeah, like, I used to believe that, but I've changed since looking at, you know, the, that there's people who aren't religious at all, but, you know, they're still like, oh, well, I don't believe in vaccines. Like, if you look at, like, Bill Maher, for example. Yes, yeah, yes. I used to believe that, but then, and also, I know atheists who are also, I mean, if you go on Twitter as much as I do, I mean, I've seen, like, these alt-right, you know, a lot of them are atheists. Oh, absolutely. But the thing is, it is actually religious thinking. It's the same it's thinking. Yes. It's the same yeah. thought process. They've taken out the God bit, but they still think like a theist. And so even though they don't worship something necessarily, they've turned Trump. 
X cause or Trump or, you know, um, my, my perceived loss of privilege or whatever into what their focus is on that religious way of thinking. So again, if we get rid of religion and the religious way of thinking, I still think a lot of those issues are going to end up um, resolving themselves. I'm, I'm talking, you know, possibly hundreds of years from now, unfortunately, but I still do think that that's possible. Morgan just yeah, I got breaking that, news. Uh, yeah, that the BRCA, which is uh, is this version 2.0 or version 3.0? Because at this they, point, I'm so lost. Knows? Yeah, well, it failed. It did not. Okay, fail. what's what's BRC, BRCA again? For the new Fair. Republican repeal and replacing of Obamacare. Oh, Two Republican oh, senators just announced they're not voting on it, and they are opposed yeah. to the health care bill. So the effort to overhaul it is ended for now. Yay! Oh, they not vote, was, or they voted and not pass. There's a difference. No, they said they said we will not vote for it. So McConnell's having to retreat again because okay, they. Good. Uh, good. they they postponed voting until Cheney got out of the hospital. Was uh, yeah. McCain? Well, Not McCain. <laughs> sorry, sorry, old white guy. Well, Cheney well, doesn't need to go to the hospital. He's got black magic. I know, right? Yeah. It's important to know whether it was voted on. <laughs> no, they. Yeah, it's. Yeah. it's, it's a, it says all 48 Democrats are expected to vote against it, but then it says Senators Mike Lee right. from Utah and Jerry Morin from Kansas issued statements saying they would not vote for a revamped measure. And because it does not go far enough to fuck us over, that is why they are not voting on it, because Mike right. Lee... But then the moderates won't vote on an extreme bill, so they're fucked. That they are, and this is... Even though I've been arguing about this because it's a, I mean, it's a super personal issue. My, my profile picture is not hyperbole as some people, I will die if the new healthcare law in whatever way, shape or form goes through anything other than what we have now or better. Yeah. Hyperbole without my medications, I am dead. My blood pressure will spike and I will stroke. That there's no, there are many other people in the same boat. So, yeah, it, it's huge that it put it on it and, and it had not passed. It would be a dead issue completely. This is going to reappear. What they're going to do is wait until after the elections. They've already strategized this and they've already published that they're going to wait until after the election cycle. So we, we might not hopefully see this for another year that's good but that 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 does not make the issue go away this is still a huge issue the only thing that those of us in my boat uh, and worse um we can uh, hope for is that the democrats will then gain in the house and the senate to the point where this will never come up other than an hopefully an improvement and i'm not saying and i've never said that the aca is perfect but it, it's something to build off of so yeah that's uh yeah that'll take some that's, yeah apparently um morin cool. the guy from kansas um he says that he opposed he wanted more protections for pre-existing conditions and things like that, and he yeah, gave a well, whole list of things, and then he was like, also he mentioned how it was going to fuck over his state, which I think that it's people who are up for re-election, who are more moderate, they are opposed to any sort of extreme well, version oh, of the bill, uh, but then actually, the, actually, 30, I, I might have my numbers, 33 Republican governors, I don't know their election status, have actually come out against Version 3.0. I know yes. they came out against 2.0, but there's a <laughs> version. <three. laughs> yeah, it's kind of wishy-washy, but basically they realize that if the expanded Medicaid goes away, which it will, regardless of what Mike Pence says, they are cutting Medicaid. Not only are they cutting it from the BRCA, but internally as well. Have to pick that up. 
and pay for it themselves or cut people off of Medicaid. Mm -hmm. So if they're not giving them the same amount of money, yeah, people are going to get knocked off of Medicaid. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Mike Pence can dress it up all he wants. He's a lying fucking piece of shit. Yeah, well, it's and he Mike. calls himself a Christian. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it, that, that, that's a good thing. But but the fight's not over because this is going to resurface. And I, I do know there's a couple Democratic, and I think Bernie Sanders is leading one uh, one aspect of... Get in. Oh, kitty. <laughs> yeah, that's her new, new perch. <laughs> but uh, his, I keep calling her her because I called her her for the first two weeks. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah that's, that's pretty cool. That is good. Oh, look at her. She's playing, or he's playing with your necklace. He's chewing your cord. <laughs> he yeah. has a cord fetish. No. So does my dog. He always he always does it. I don't know how to get him to stop. Um. Well, well uh, the basco on the cord might help. Oh, and I got plenty of hot sauce. There you go. Yeah. Well. What are you doing? Whatever. <laughs> he all of a sudden decided to be playful. Yeah, the other day I, I He's gotten I so big. A, I know. Yeah, he's, he's gonna be Yep. Yeah, he's about Yeah, he can jump up on my lap now, no problem. He gets up on the desk by himself by jumping up on the chair. So yeah, he's doing things. But I hung up a thing behind me, it's a string with the foil ball on it and he does not meow. He lets out this little. I mean, <laughs> and, and if you're not listening, you're not gonna hear it. And um, he had gotten his tail wrapped around in the string. Oh. So it's like, uh, yeah. He he's a handful. Yeah. I mean, no, no, no cords, ding nut. <laughs> Yeah, you might have to try a bit of hot hot something on the cord for once. Well, if he's like my old, my other cat, uh, Young Chi, he'll like it. I tried that uh -oh. with her. She likes spicy hot stuff. I know he was eating uh -oh. pepperoni the other day, and uh -oh. the pepperoni I I have from downstairs is pretty spicy. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> when my last dog, uh, the he was my dog of a lifetime. He's passed away now but when he was a puppy he used to eat his own doo-doos oh no and they said and they said oh put hot sauce on it because it'll make them taste bad and i'm like well they taste good or they said or they said cut it open and put something inside it like he I would think that like, like, to get walk her. around and somebody's just cutting up dog shit. Like what? <laughs> I feel like that person's a crazy person. I'm going to leave this park. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm just trying to discourage him from eating it. Oh, that makes me feel <laughs> like, so much. Work. I'm going to dog somewhere else, lady. Like, see you later. I'm just preparing it for my own dinner. I mean, <laughs> oh, oh god. Yeah. Uh, fecal transplant. What they do with That's cow poop? You know, dog poop. Yeah. Oh, or like oh, Thomas God, was saying, the the Hindus with the cows. <laughs> That's so gross. It reminds me of there was another story in India, but I want to say it was with Christians, and there was a statue of Jesus or something, and people like thought it was a miracle that it was like leaking water. Was yeah, it, Jesus? it was. A it was Jesus. Yes. It was dripping water off of off of the fingers of the statue, and they were like, "Oh, it's miraculous! Jesus is like sweating or something like that's appetizing." And they would collect it and drink it. And then they found out later that there was like a public washroom nearby that had a burst pipe, and that's someone where... told them. And didn't he get like ran out of town or something? Because people were like, "How dare you say that it's sewage or whatever when it's coming from Jesus?" Or he got like some serious criticism for telling the people about it at least. And they're like, "No, it's a miracle." And the guy was like, "All right, keep drinking pee." <laughs> like, yeah, there, there's what? a meme with that story story on, but I don't know if any of the memes uh, connect to any of the 
Yeah. There we go. I've got one from uh, the a story from The Guardian. Um, it just says, let's see, when water started trickling down a statue of Jesus Christ in a Catholic church in Mumbai. So this is India. Uh, earlier this year, locals were quick to declare miracles. Some began collecting the holy water at the Church of Our Lady of Valklani and began to promote it as a site of pilgrimage. So when uh, Sanal Edamaruku arrived and established that it was not holy water so much as holy plumbing, H-O-L-E-Y, uh, the backlash was severe. The renowned rationalist was accused of blasphemy, charged with offenses that carry three-year yeah. prison sentence, and eventually, after receiving death threats, had to seek exile in Finland. Holy fuck! Oh, the they they right right Which they were? Yeah. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and he was just trying to tell them the truth. Jesus. Fuck! Yeah. But, they, but that tells you how irrational people are in believing certain things. And as like that mentioned earlier, you take anti-GMO, anti-vax, anti-climate change, and you take them down to their root. It's this irrational belief and stupid shit. Yep. I mean, it's a little more technical than that, but that's what it comes down to. But the belief, the beliefs compared to religion are identical. And there was actually, a, I don't know if it was an actual study or just a, a paper in general, you know, commenting on this. But, yeah, there, there, there's stuff comparing how, you know, taken down to the core of these irrational beliefs, conspiracy theories, at its core are basically religious arguments with different words. Oh, and get there, this. Everything else is so the guy, I guess he's well known as as a skeptic rationalist in India. I, I'm not mm -hmm. familiar with him, but it's a he he's been living in Finland since the summer. He was actually out of India on uh, a lecture tour in Europe when his partner rang to say that the police had arrived at his flat. He said he felt really upset because under the blasphemy law, you can't get bail until the court case begins. So if he had been home, he would have been in jail now because the court case hadn't begun. Oh, no. And then it says he has burned an offer from a senior Indian Catholic bishop to apologize for the exposure of the, quote, miracle. Fuck you. <laughs> Oh but, and, and that goes to the heart of why these blasphemy laws are just asinine because especially over in India and some of your Middle Eastern countries, basically it, it, it's terrible. I mean, you're, you're in jail until your trial and most likely you're going to be found guilty whether you are or not. It, well, for the, for the cat. Catholic Church, the you know stuff like that. Like if you're discouraging a pilgrimage, then you're taking money out of the you know you're taking food out oh, of the yeah. Pope's mouth. Yes, yep. that's true. And the 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 fellow um, Ida Maruku was his surname says um, blasphemy laws are very strange because they can be both very silly and also very sinister. They are very mm -hmm. silly. Because because you are talking about crying statues and moving statues of or Virgin Marys appearing in tree stumps in County Limerick, referring to Ireland, because apparently the Irish, um, something about the, that part of the Irish church could have had sway in this. Uh, but on the other hand, these types of laws are used in Islamic countries to jail people or sentence them to death. Or in this case, facing a jail sentence for his work in exposing bogus miracles. So, yeah. Oh, I see what this, because this is a Guardian um, article. Um, they're talking about the impact on Ireland. So I guess that the it's an Irish article. So yeah. there's... They're saying that's why the reference to Ireland is they're saying um, Ireland should pay attention to the stupidity because they're a, ca a Catholic country, basically. So, well, I think I I think they are going through or already have a whole issue with the blasphemy laws, whether to get rid of them. 
Maybe, I don't know. Because uh, I'm trying to remember, I think, th think that's at the forefront or they were going through the issue. Because I know, didn't Canada just uh, get rid of theirs or working now, on it? It's it's in process. So um, a bill was tabled to upgrade or update several laws, one of which was to repeal the blasphemy law. Um, it is, I think it's on its last reading, but it hasn't been put into law just yet, but it will be. Um, interesting, Morgan, you'll find this interesting. Um, well, did we talk about this on the show last time? I forget where I talked about this just recently, but the blasphemy law is actually basically unenforceable in Canada. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. Um, yeah, because it's based on um, if if it's your if it's basically your sincerely held belief what you say, then you're allowed to say it. So it's like, oh, I didn't know that. That's funny. Yeah. So if you say, you know, Jesus was an asshole and somebody's like, that's blasphemous. But if you can show that you genuinely believe that, then you're OK. So oh, that's funny. It's yeah. So that's why it's basically I heard first of all. The last time it was in, they try, someone tried to enforce it was with a theater showing like the life of Brian from Monty Python, like back in the 80s or something. 70s girl 70s <laughs> yep yeah a lot actually uh the life of brian a lot of places tried to ban that and sadly we were one of them but uh no it didn't work while, while we're funny. talking law stuff morgan you saw this thread that i had posted about the um I'm sorry, Beth. Background. You're talking, and in the background, your cat is scaling the furniture. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't surprise yeah, I'm me. Sorry, it's just funny. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, he's in his spot. But you, you saw the post I did about the Texas cross, the sign. Yeah. Yes, and they said the cross is a um, non-sectarian symbol of death, so it's okay if they put up a symbol of the cross because it means nothing. It's just a cross oh. you know the method oh. instrument of death and i was like okay so i'll just start putting up signs of electric chairs yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like that but my my friend responded with and i want your input i did i don't want to calm out too much but he goes uh because it's a state thing he's like uh where to go where to go but the state is not congress Depending on the state's own blah, 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 and he goes, okay, so it, to me, that's a very Barton-esque argument. It is very Barton-esque, and I think that's actually where that argument, I think it doesn't stem necessarily from Barton it comes himself. From, but it comes from yeah. him? Okay, because I, I knew people that he was, his associates, uh, as I say, I know they pushed that argument. Yeah, I mean, is there, okay, my question to you based on your knowledge now i want to see if it comports with me that's bullshit right it does i mean because our, yes. our federal constitution basically overrules state constitution because you can have shit in your state constitution that is against federal law and it's not enforceable correct Yes. Yeah, so what happens is the state is always free to enhance the protections that the Constitution gives. So, for example, um, before Trinity Lutheran, um, uh, over a dozen states had that provision that no money could go at all to any sort of religious um, institution. So it didn't matter what purpose it was for. You know, it, it clearly the Missouri Constitution stated you cannot give money to any sectarian, religious, or any entity or person like that if it comes from the government in any way, shape, or form. So that's a little bit more stronger language than an establishment clause, for example, um, just to beef it up a little bit more. So, and states are always free to beef up um, certain protections. So, um, for example, in the state of Mississippi, I know, um, as to my knowledge, I don't think the Mississippi Supreme Court has ever ruled this, but you have a right to resist arrest if it is an unlawful arrest despite what many justice court judges will tell you otherwise in a court of law. That is the state law in Mississippi. Um, but, yeah, it has to be an unlawful arrest. But, um, yeah, so that trumps, that's a state law that's, you know, it, 
higher than basically what the federal law is. But the federal law has to be the baseline, right? You can't go below what the federal protections are. You can only go up and enhance those protections. Right. Um, okay. So it, it, that is absolutely incorrect because it is it, the federal government cannot put up little pictures of crosses on all the highway signs, you know, and <laughs> argue that, oh, well, these are just generic non-sectarian symbols of death that we put on highway well, signs for absolutely no reason like that's you can't do that so therefore the state no. can't do that so and, and, and uh, let's say there's some somebody shows up on their job with like a big ass honking cross on and you can be like i'm sorry i don't allow um, non-sectarian symbols of death at work you have to take it off and if it's not religious it's gone <laughs> That would actually well, be interesting if somebody tried to do that. Tried, I mean, he tried to use that argument saying, well, what about the swastika? Because before, you know, Nazi Germany, the swastika Hindu was a, yeah, a Hindu and Buddhist symbol. So, you know, and same thing with the cross. There is pre-Christian use of the cross. But it's like uh, they are forever now linked with what they are linked with. You will never be able to, to go back to their original meaning as much yeah, as you like, tried. Yeah, like even really. if you go to India, it's like good. they don't have swastikas around usually in well, anything actually, modern. they do. Like, because it has, are they in modern buildings? Uh, I don't know about yeah. modern buildings, but they will. Like I bought um, Hindu literature like about Kalima and other things, and it's full of swastikas. Well, yeah, because that's probably ancient um, no, drawings no, and stuff. Oh, no, it's not? No, recent publications. Interesting. Well, I do, I do know that within India, and, okay, the Braillians are in on this, too. i tell you how crazy they are. But they are trying to re-image specifically the swastika. Uh, that's because, not going to happen. Because... Yeah, they're they're having a tough hoe. So I know I do know the devs are in India. They are trying to yeah, fix it, for lack of a better word. take it back. But, I guess we, we gotta, yeah, we gotta, take it back to its original. We got I was. I, I was just going to say, we're going to ask her after. Shortly, but, um, before we go, though, um, Morgan, I, I'll just read you the actual blasphemy law because I think you'll get It's actually a libel law, which kind of goes full circle. So it says, everyone who publishes a blasphemous libel is guilty of an indictable offense, which in Canada means a felony. Um, and and liable to imprisonment of a time not exceeding two years. Here's the exceptions. Article That was Article 1. Article 2, it is a question of fact whether or not any matter that is published is blasphemous liable. And Article 3, no person shall be convicted of an offense under this section for expressing in good faith and in decent language or attempting to or attempting to establish by argument used in good faith and conveyed in decent language an opinion on a religious subject. What is decent language? So you can't be like uh, Jesus sucked my cock or whatever. <laughs> like, but even then, I don't see them enforcing that because it's just like a bad. It's just bad optics. It makes Canada look like a backwards country. So I imagine they just don't bother to enforce it anyway. Like it's that, like a lot of the old laws the United States has, and because I know like in Mississippi, I think it's illegal to get an elephant drunk in the city of Vicksburg. There's actually a reason for that law. It's a, it's a long story, but. Oh, we have <laughs> We have a law here in town, or we did, they may have repealed it, uh, that you cannot be of color and walk down the center sidewalk. We have a place called Prosper, uh, Prosper. and uh, if, you're, if you're black, at the, you, know, you cannot walk down the center sidewalk. Wow. And it's still on the it's still on the books, as far as I know. I'd have to. Well, look to be fair, Mississippi to never outlawed slavery until I think officially, and they, we never ratified the amendment until two thousand one or two thousand two. And I was just like, yeah, never yeah. got around to that one. Huh? And yeah, and I know in Alabama they did they voted on it, which I don't see why because it's already you know the Supreme well, Court had already like decided. When, uh, 
on interracial marriage uh, and it almost failed. Oh, it's geez. just like when Whitman, uh, Whitman was the elected governor of New Jersey, at the time they had to call an emergency session of the state legislators to rewrite their constitution saying that a woman could be governor. Wow. Now this is, I mean, that was back in the 80s, early 90s, maybe. It's like, seriously? Wow. They elected someone that legally, they well, according to state law, but yeah. How crazy uh, some of our laws were. Well, our, we, better, we better wrap things up though, because uh, I know some some folks have uh, to, to go to sleep soon. So, <laughs> um, so um, Beth, where do we find you at? Easiest way is on Twitter, Dune Triple Nine Eight. That connects to my Facebook, which is Beth A. Ambridge. You can also find me on Google Plus under that name, as well as YouTube. And I am working on a new video, so oh. that's easiest. And Morgan, where do we find you? All right, you can follow me on Twitter at MoString. That's M O S T R I N G. You can also catch me on the Bi Skeptical podcast with Trav Mamone on iTunes, Spreaker, and Stitcher about every two weeks. And you can also find me on Facebook, Morgan L. Stringer. Sweet. Hey, Tracy, where do we find you? Uh, on Facebook, I am Godless Mama. And on Twitter, at The Godless Mama. And Morgan and I are also on Facebook as The Political Feminist. Awesome. And I finally, because I'm such a dork when it comes to websites, I finally updated the website so all your Twitters and stuff are on there at beyondthetrailerpark.com because I forgot that I had stuff up there. But the <laughs> I fixed it. And, of course, uh, you can find me on Holy Crap, the vlogcast, which is Sunday mornings at 12.05 a.m. on uh, YouTube. You can find that through holycrapthevlogcast.com. And, as usual, we also like to mention the Waitfields Educational Foundation and their Taylor Scholarship, which provides counseling for people who are leaving or have left religion and don't have uh, the money to pay for it. The Taylor Scholarship provides that funding. It was started by David Michael on my Book of Mormon podcast. So the URL is whitefieldseducational.org forward slash my Book of Mormon podcast if you feel like uh, donating to a worthy charity. And we're not a charity, but we do have a Patreon and we use that to pay for our streak Spreaker account. I almost said we had a Streaker account. That would be fun. <laughs> Patreon goal. What? <laughs> Our speaker account. Yeah, that's what the water bottles are for in case anybody's wondering. <laughs> but if you feel like throwing us a buck or two, uh, that'd be awesome. Because as I say, we do use that to pay for our hosting and our live streaming. So that would be great. Uh, next week, and I'm such a dork because I don't have my calendar up, but we do have a guest next week. Um, <laughs> and his name is escaping me because we have guests backed up for two weeks now. Uh, I should get my calendar out. Hurry up and windows load my calendar. We are talking to Robert Stanley who does the Right to Reason podcast. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, his show and what he does and all about Robert. So that'll be next week here at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And I hope folks are enjoying the new time slot. I know I think we are. Um, makes it easier. We get some people in the, uh, the chat. So this is good. So we will see everybody here next week at 7.30. And until then, we will leave you with Foda and his human creed. And we'll see you then. I know the truth and power of reason and of rational thinking, and I will use them to my advantage. I know the truth and power of educating myself and of expanding my intellectual boundaries, and I will educate myself. I know the truth and power of vanquishing ignorance, and I will do so whenever the opportunity presents itself. I know the truth and power of morality without supervision, and of true and accurate righteousness. I know the truth and power of obliterating tyranny 
be it intellectual, emotional, or philosophical, and will work toward that goal whenever and however possible. I know the truth and power of human ingenuity. I know the truth and power of human compassion, and I will be mindful of the welfare of others. I know the truth and power of equality and fairness for all living things. I know the truth and power of the importance of our families, our friends, and our fellow men and women. I know the truth and power of human stewardship of our lands, our waters, and our skies. And I will try to act to preserve our environment. I know the truth and power of the sciences of mathematics, of physics, and of chemistry. And of the important role of these disciplines in understanding the workings of this cosmos. I know the truth and power of the rejection of all notions or beliefs that reside in the supernatural or the superstitious, and of those notions or beliefs that we are not supposed to be able to explain. And I know that these rejections are necessary for humankind's survival. I am a human being with a free mind, liberated from irrational influence and from unreasonable dogma.